Hey, somebody's got to file my taxes. There's more time? Excellent. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. You are listening to the Professional Noticer. Hey, good morning, Metropolis. It's now 5 after the hour of 6 a.m. in the big monster city. Here, you and I will use common sense and all the wisdom we can muster to move beyond what is true and go all the way to the truth. Where are you boys from in the world? Alabama, sir. With actual listeners in more than 100 countries around the world, I am the Professional Noticer. Although I do have a nickname I've been stuck with and can't seem to lose, it's Fast Gunpipe. Hello everyone, I'm Andy Andrews. Hey, thank you for making me a part of your week. As the professional noticer, it's my job to professionally notice something for you. And nothing's off limits, so you got a question? Huh? Business? Spiritual issues? Popular culture? We'll even tackle the odd conundrum. Like, is there anyone out there who can recite mathematical pie backwards? <laughs> Look. My purpose here, in reality, today with every show we do, is to play the part of a best friend or a coach. I want to help you live the life you would live if all your toughest questions were answered. I want to bring some perspective to the table. Our sponsor this week is, well, we didn't accept a sponsor this week. We decided to give this airtime and dedicate it to all the essential workers out there, all the people who are on the front lines in the fight against COVID-19 and trying to figure out what's going on with this and the people who are bringing perspective to the families and to the to the job market and there are obviously tons of people out there working in the medical field people who are at more risk than those of us who are uh, quarantined and 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 placed alone and just kind of hibernating with our families. These people are doing what they do and doing it well in terribly adverse circumstances. I uh, can just imagine the uncertainty, but the resolve that they have is inspiring. And you guys, man, we appreciate you so much, so very much. Um, I, I saw the the people the other day at, at urgent care in Orange Beach and was just amazed at uh, them. They're there at work and with their masks, their gloves and smiles in their eyes. You can see the smiles on their faces, but you see the smiles in their eyes. And so uh, these ladies are just, uh, just amazing. And just really appreciate all you people who are out there uh, doing work, the policemen, the firemen, these uh, hospital workers, the medical people, these, you know, these people the, um, are not, uh, not standing down. And in many cases, they're staying someplace other than in their home with their family, staying actually away from their families during this time. So uh, thank you guys so much. Your, our thoughts and prayers are with you. And we have great, great appreciation for what you are doing. All right. Observations and answers are what we do here. This week, how about some observations? It, this is such an amazing time. We are going uh, from just kind of one day to the next and seeing how things change and and uh, what we're uh, after, how we're trying to accommodate the, the newest rules and the newest uh, advice that we get. Um, how are you spending your time? What, what are you doing? I, you know, the people I'm talking to, it is amazing to see, and I, I see this in my own life, it's amazing to see that there seems to be, I mean, I've had, I've had people say to me, I, I don't want to seem like I'm liking this, but wow, you know, I'm spending a lot of time with my family and we've like slowed down a lot. Yeah, it can. It can sometimes take a punch in the face to slow you down. And I've experienced that in my life. And, and uh, this is certainly an international punch in the face. Uh, but I think that for, for the great majority of us, we are uh, taking the, 
the the view that we're going to make the best of it, and we're going to uh, take the best of the of the information that we get, and we're going to continue on. Uh, you know, as we've talked before, perspective is is not just how you see things; it's how you choose to see things. And so, I think a lot of you. I, I'm just very proud of a lot of you. A lot of you are using this time to become even more valuable to others than you are. You know, last week we talked about Sugarcane Jane, and and last Tuesday night we all got on. I, I appreciate seeing so many of you on their broadcast. They're on again tonight, 9.30 tonight, on the Sugarcane Jane Facebook. And uh, it's just... It, it is an awesome thing to see. We, we talked last week about how sometimes people can, can take you know, what they consider horrible news and build it in their mind to the point that it just becomes worse and worse. It's, it's living in fear. And it, there's, you know, there is the kind of fear that keeps you away from the edge of the cliff. Right, I mean that's like rational fear, but there is also that kind of fear that is just being afraid of something that you don't know what is going to happen. Right, it's what um, it, it's what Seneca talked about. That you know, I, I I love what he said about there are many things that can crush us, but there are many, many, many more things that frighten us than there are that simply crush us, and and so. What we're looking to do is to look at our situations with perspective. We're going to choose how we see what's happening. You know, it's not that the glass is half full or that it's half empty. It's how you choose to see it and what you choose to do because of it. Um, I have never failed to see... In any horrible situation, and people, you know, people are uh, reluctant to talk about it because they don't want somebody to think, "Oh, I'm glad this happened." And it's not that. It's it's a matter of when there are things that are going wrong, and especially the bigger the disaster, there are always people who th who really think beyond what they know, and they think beyond what is known, and they. They think to a point where they can be of service, where they can be of value to other people. And what happens over and over and over again, you can't show me any disaster that has ever happened that we couldn't find people who gave in to the disaster and we couldn't find people who prospered in that disaster you know, the, which was the same one. I mean, the Great Depression, when the stock market fell, it, yes, we hear about people diving out of the windows on Wall Street. But what we never hear about is that that was the one time in American history where more families made fortunes that lasted until this day than any other. And so we have to remember that that is nervous as many are about the uh, downturn economically because of the virus, we, we always, always want to remember that a downturn in the economy is a dot on the line. Do you understand what I'm saying? A downturn in the economy is a just kind of a dot on the graph. It's a midpoint, right? It's the fulcrum of the seesaw. And, and so... If you want to have any certainty that the traditional news media plays up how bad things are, you need look no farther than the the fulcrum, that that midpoint on that graph that says that we're in a recession or that whatever, you know, because that is literally a halfway mark. And so they are reporting about people that are in bad shape and some companies that are doing badly. But because that recession mark is a midpoint, that means there are also companies that are doing fine. 
And while there may be companies going out of business, there are companies making more money than they ever thought about making in their lives. I, I remember uh, during the hurricane, I may have said this last week, Matt, but I remember during the hurricane how people said this is the worst thing that could happen to anybody. This is the worst thing that happened. And, and it did. It looked like a bomb had gone off in this whole area. But it wasn't the worst thing that could happen for everybody. Because, you know, Home Depot, Ace Hardware, these places were doing great. You know, we had friends who were roofers who made more money during that several-year period. They made more money than they ever thought about making in their life. And and so, you know, over and over again, you find what people think is the worst. They can think their way to something that was... That was the best. You know, we, the boys were very little during that hurricane time. And um, they were a little older during the war, the oil spill, but they were still small. But during the hurricane, they were very small. You know, I think Austin was like six. And so Adam would have been like three. But there was a, a time we, we would like go over to our shell that we used to call the house about every day, just to kind of look. You know, it took over a year before anybody started even working on anything. and But we would go and just kind of wander around over there. And we saw right down the, the, the way there, right down the street, there was a mom and a dad and a little girl. And they were out kind of looking around their house. Now, we had never met them. And they were, let's see, one, two, three, there were four, there were four houses down. And, and so one day they kind of saw us and we saw them. And there's, I mean, there's no agenda. There's nothing anybody's doing, right? And, and so we just kind of wandered together. And the little girl was Austin's age. And, uh, and her name was Lacey. And so uh, uh, the, her, her parents... John and Shannon, we just we just became just great friends that lasted. I mean, that friendship has lasted into this very day. And we all really doubt we would have met each other. It, you know, had and Lacey and Adam and Austin are just like brothers and sisters. I mean, they're just very close. I don't, I don't think a day goes by that Austin and Lacey don't talk in some, you know, either texting or talking and and Polly and Shannon talk. You know, John passed away a couple of years ago. And oh, I miss John. But we, you know, we had a, just a great friendship that evolved out of, you know, bad circumstances for both of us. And and I see this happening now. I, I see people spending time with their families in ways that they ordinarily would not. What are you doing? What are what are you doing? How how are you getting up in the morning? What are you doing when you get up? Are you um, are you immersing yourself in news all day? I hope not. I really, I I hope not. I mean, if you have to watch it at all, just you know, get in, get your information, and get out. Don't obsess over this. Don't allow somebody to make you obsess over this all right this, there are things that there are things that you know you already know or you know a version of it and there's no reason to sit there and have your imagination fertilized in the wrong direction but that fear man that's just that uh misuse of that creative imagination and so you can use your imagination to find solutions you can use your imagination to to help or you can use your imagination to just absolutely freeze you up we got a friend who i just think is just one of the greatest uh I, he'll go down in history i mean one day he'll be in business books as one of the greatest CEOs of all time. And he has a saying about adversity and about times like 
we have here, and I, th- I think it's just awesome. And the the uh, the saying is, remember, things came to pass; they didn't come to stay. It came to pass, not to stay. So it's not permanent. And so, uh, you know, grab some perspective about this and understand this too shall pass. So I, I look at, at the opportunities that we have during this time. To, and really the greatest opportunities revolve around making people feel better. You know, I've, I've got a very close friend, and I know some of you have heard me talk about him. His name is Jimmy Yeary. And Jimmy is, you know, he's he's officially my little brother, okay? I mean, he's officially. I have like three or four little brothers. You know, Matt is one of them. Matt is one of them. Um, uh, Jimmy, Jason Crabb, Wes Hampton. I've got, I've got several little brothers. And uh, Jimmy's one of them. I knew Jimmy. Matt, did you know that I knew Sonia? I knew Jimmy's wife before Jimmy knew Jimmy's wife. How about that? And um, and Jimmy is, oh, my gosh. I mean, this is, when I say Jimmy is a songwriter, um, I know there's, you know, a lot of times we know people who've written some songs. We know songwriters. And all that, but Jimmy's like, he's the real deal. You know, he's... Uh, he he he's the one who wrote "I Drive Your Truck," who that won uh, the CMA Song of the Year and the ACM Song of the Year. Uh, he wrote Kenny Chesney's last two number ones. He's had number one hits in several genres, and not just country music. But this guy writes deep stuff, man. And I just I'm always blown away by what Jimmy does. And so several years ago. Um, you know, he wrote one and he, he would, he was saying, we talk all the time and, and he sent one and, and he, you know, what do you think? And, and so for the first time, see, Jimmy can sing. All right. Not all songwriters can sing. Anthony Crawford can sing. Jimmy can sing. Uh, Brent Burns can sing. But you know, the, the songwriters that can sing, it kind of goes down from there. Okay. I, to me, um, but Jimmy can sing. He used to be the lead singer for Shenandoah. And and so I'd been after him for a number of years to do an album and to come on, you know, do something. Because, I mean, other produ- producers in Nashville were, like, asking Jimmy, come on, man, let me produce an album on you. And, you know, Jimmy came off the road, so he, you know, and so you could raise a family. He wanted to just write and be at home. And they have three little precious kids and – and uh, live in Hendersonville, north north of Nashville there. But he sent me this one song uh, one day, and, and he said, what do you think? And I said, I'll tell you what I think. I think you don't need to give that to anybody. You, you don't, I, I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is. I, I, you know, what, who's the guy? Uh, Tim McGraw just recorded one of Jimmy's songs last week, all right? Uh I mean, these people are always, but I, I told Jimmy, I said, when I heard this one, I said, uh-uh, don't give it to anybody. He said, seriously? I said, yeah. I said, you need to save this because at some point you're going to do an album. I know you are, and you need to have songs like this. You, you, don't, you know, you got to have just this these incredible songs. And I said, so don't let anybody have this. And he laughed, but he hung on to it. And I did that with several songs. And so... About six months ago, uh, he finally said yes to one of the producers, a big producer that was wanting to do an album on him, and and so he did these cuts. I, I've heard the master. It, it's just it's unbelievable. Well, get this: his first single has just been released. It was released Friday, and the song is called "Same Water, Different Boat." And man, you talk about a song for our times right now. Because, I, you know, in the world right now, with this virus, we're all, this is, 
same one or different boat, baby. I mean, <laughs> it's it's everybody. I don't care what their income is. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what part of the world they live in. We are we are in. We may be in different boats, but it's the same water. You know, we're all floating in the same sea right now. And um, this this song just is such a great one for this time. I and so with it being brand new, now you can go on YouTube. And and hear the song, okay? Just Jimmy Yeary, Y E A R Y, um, same water, different boat. And let me tell you this: it, it, Jimmy is so respected in Nashville that uh, the voice you hear doing background on this particular cut is Vince Gill. Vince Gill said, "I want to go down. I want to. I'll sing the backup on this." And so uh, I I asked Jimmy. I called and said, hey, can I play this for everybody? And he said, of course. And so, anyway, Matt, turn that turn that thing on. Listen to these words. This is just awesome. We're all in this together. But Jimmy puts it so well in this. So it, the chorus is like we're, we're all just riding on this rock together. We're all just kind of learning as we go, trying to find a little break in stormy weather. Just out there trying to keep this thing afloat. Same water, different boat. Here it is. Same water, different boat. Jimmy Yeary, brand new. We all bleed and we all cry. Some out loud, some inside. We all get knocked down sometimes, ain't they? We all want what we don't have We all love and we all look back Tell me, friend, I don't that Sound like me Yeah, we're all just riding on this rock together We're all just kind of learning as we go Trying to find a little break in stormy weather Just out here trying to keep this thing from same water We all got cards that we don't show We all got dreams that run out the road Ain't got a clue what tomorrow holds But here we go Yeah, we're all just riding on this lot together We're all just kind of learning as we go Trying to find a little break in stormy weather Just out here trying to keep this thing afloat same water, different gold. Same water, different gold. Same laugh, different joke. Same town, different folk. Same high, different smoke. Same water, different gold. Love that song, you guys. Um, I'm, I'm putting the YouTube link in there for the music video, so pass that around. Make sure that that people have heard that, and people. Um, I, what, I, just, I just think it's an inspirational song that that is just right now. And you're talking about connecting people, bringing value to people's lives. That song is one way we can do it, and so I'm. I'm telling you, the past couple of days, I've been sending that song 
to everybody that I know. And so um, join me, all right? What else are you doing? What else? Are you reconnecting with friends? I'm finding that I'm getting calls from some people that I – and, you know, that it's not that we intended not to talk for a long time, but we just haven't connected in a long time. And, and all of a sudden, there's a little extra time in the day – you're going to talk and say, hey, just making sure you're okay. How, how's everything going? How is your family? Everybody's staying safe? You know, you, the kid's driving you crazy? What, what's happening? And so um, I, I think that, that that's something that can be done, probably should be done. I think there's some of you that should write a book during this time. I, I, I'm amazed. I wish I had a dollar for every person who has come up to me in an airport in the past 15, 20 years and said, I'm going to write a book one day. It, well, today's the day. If you ever had the opportunity to start on your book, it's now. Take the time now. Because, yeah, I say take the time. You've got the time, more than likely. And, it, you know, at the very least, if you're not one to write a book, keep a journal. Talk about, uh, you know, what has happened in the last little amount of time. I mean, talk, talk about how this has been handled. Talk about maybe, you know, what what you see. What, what could we do differently? You know, what memories do you have when you're talking to these people? What memories do you have with that person? Is there anything that you need to ask forgiveness for? There's so many things that our thoughts can lead us to during this time. Uh, it just, you know, like I said, at the very least, keep a journal. Write a song. Write a song. You, you don't know. I mean, that, that song could be something that inspires, helps so many people. Play games with your kids. Make up games if you have to. I think a cool game would be like penny golf. You ever played penny golf? Matt, it's great. You can you can actually do an 18 hole course inside your house or outside your house. But you know, you and one of your children. Which may, is that why you hadn't played penny golf? Because you hadn't got children. Probably it. But but you can um, take coffee cups. Make sure you don't get the good china ones. Get you know get those thick mugs. And if you want to just have a nine-hole golf course, put them in different places in the house. Establish your tee boxes, right? And, um, you know, because some of them, the par threes, you may be able to make a long throw, get a hole in one on a par three. But you're just, you're going around the house with one penny. You're keeping score. You got to get it in every one of those cups. I used to do that just run it by myself, I suppose. I doesn't sound very productive, but it's a lot of fun. It, it's just like, uh, you, you know, like tossing stuff, tossing a penny into that cup. But th there is something that is incredibly satisfying when you throw that thing in that thing and I mean, it just gets right in. Oh my gosh, it's just incredibly satisfying. I, I've always liked to throw things into stuff for some reason. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge golfer, um, even though I am talking to Nancy Lopez this afternoon, by the way, and I did stay at Holiday Inn Express last night, but I'm not a big golfer. Uh, I, I I play, or used to, till my neck and back got so screwed up, um, but I, I've probably played, I don't know, a hundred times in my life. I don't know. That's probably not very much for golfers, but one of the things you know, usually when I play, it's because somebody I, I'm doing this for some it's one, a charity thing or something. And one of the things that I started years ago on a golf course was when I got uh, you know get the ball out of the cup and everybody's walking back to their cart after they played the hole. I would turn around, be like 20 feet away from the hole, and I say, "Hey guys, watch this." And I turn around, and I just like kind of basketball shot the golf ball. I just like throw the golf ball back to the cup, and and so you know in the air. And say if I did that a hundred times, 
97, 98 have missed, right? Uh, obviously. Uh, you just say, yeah, obviously. But two or three times, I've actually rung the cup. Now, all I would say was I'd say, hey, guys, watch this. And then if I missed it, which I did most of the time, I'd go, yeah, worth a shot, worth a try. Um, but the couple of three times that I actually rung that cup from 20 feet away with a golf ball, people's jaws dropped, and, and I, I would be like, yeah, I, you know, I've always been able to do that. I don't, I don't know what. And, of course, I would never do it again, not in front of them. I mean, as far as they knew, I could always do that. And so, I, but that penny golf thing is pretty cool. You need to set up that hole, you know, anywhere, a nine-hole course. You can do inside and outside, do an 18-hole course. Challenge your kids. Beat their brains out at penny golf. Come on. I mean, this, this, these are just things you can do. Um, I really, I really think that as bad as things are, we, I, we, we wish this weren't happening, but it is. I, there's a couple of things that I know. I know that there will be some good things come out of this for you. I know that there will be differences made during this time for you. And I want you to know that I expect that, that I, I expect that and pray for that for you, that your family will be safe, that your friends will be safe, that you will be smart through this. And just don't be, just don't, I get off on on a ridiculous tear. We I've seen that. We, Matt, we ought to do a show sometime. Do the entire podcast on ridiculous people. You know, just ridiculous things that I have seen. I mean, I've I've seen. You know, we I post Facebook stuff and and um, you know videos and and uh, just quotes and some thoughts, perspective mainly. And uh, I, I have seen a few ridiculous people commenting. I, and I, w- I want to go, is there any way to, can you block somebody on Facebook? Can you do that? So, you, can? Yeah, you can? Okay, I'm going to show you a couple I want to block after we get through. All right. Um, yeah, I definitely want to get the block. I, I definitely want to block the guy who said, I, and I can't remember what post this was about, but it, he he like went off in this rant and said, do you do you ever read your own books? Do you even read your own books? How do you kill eleven million people? You lie to them. They're lying about all this, and I'm like, seriously, dude? Do you, all these people are lying about being dead? <laughs> you know, I mean, their their families are lying about their family members dying. I mean, are you kidding me? How do you, how do you pull something like that off? And so I just so I'll, I'll show you. When we, when we get off the air here, I'll show you, and you can block him for me because I don't want to hear from him again. I ain't, I ain't got time to hear this stuff. You know, I, 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 I like to have normal people in my life. And, um, and so I am excited about this being over. We don't know when, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that time. But I'm also not going to ignore the time we have right now we have the opportunity to set some new things in place for our families we have the opportunity to set some new uh, just some new habits some new traditions with our families wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to to read together you know you know your kids don't have to be little kids for you to read to them. Hey, every year still, you know, Polly still reads the night before Christmas to the boys. And, you know, on that night before Christmas, and and I still read the, the Luke 2 through 14 from the Bible. And we read to each other. Polly and I read, there's a Feral Sam's book called Comes a Horseman. And, uh, that was a book Polly and I read to each other when we first got married. You guys, this too shall pass. It came to pass not to stay, 
Things will be fine. Things will be fine. I'm Andy Andrews, the professional noticer, harnessing common sense and wisdom to plow through challenges all the way to an answer for you. Where do you seek wisdom? I hope Wisdom Harbor. We've opened up a lot of this uh, for you. Uh, we've opened up a, a lot where you can just go in and see. You can go in and listen to audiobooks. Um, I did The Call of the Wild for Wisdom Harbor. Um, I know the Young Traveler's Gift is on there. Uh, there are curriculums if you want your children to, to read them. There's a, The Kid Who Changed the World. There, there are a lot of things. Look at the Bet You Didn't Know doc. Um, those are, those are I, I think, very, very interesting. But um, the whole site, Wisdom Harbor, is, is something that you will be able to use. And this is something that you can use now and expand your use later. But um, go in. Check it out. Have fun. WisdomHarbor.com. That's uh, H-A-R-B-O-U-R. And... If you haven't reviewed us on on iTunes, I would appreciate you doing that. You know, you, you can only review a certain podcast one time. So if you have, thank you so much. If you haven't, please go give us a nice review. And I think, I think that'll do it for this week. Get us out of here, Matthew. So, ladies and gentlemen. And to the boys and girls who aspire to become ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of another episode of The Professional Noticer. In a world where common sense has become a superpower, I'm harnessing that mental energy that I have. Though it be tiny, I'm harnessing it for you. Seeking wisdom, making observations, and endeavoring to answer tough questions in a way that will empower your family and your business. I'm Andy Andrews. Until next week, smile while you talk. For God's sake, don't touch anybody. But make sure you have a positive answer to the question, how's he going? And so until next week, goodbye. This episode of The Professional Noticer was produced by Matt Limpert. The Noticer theme written and performed by Sugarcane Jane. Binoculars provided by Twinkle and Smoke of Beverly Hills. Additional financial consideration provided by UnincorporatedTowns.com. At UnincorporatedTowns.com, we're raising awareness. For the teensy tiny towns all around you, these often overlooked and underhomed patches of wilderness are an important part in every state's hearing and hearken back to the ways important things were done in yesterday. These often overlooked and underhomed patches of wilderness are an important part of every state's heritage and hearken back to the way things were in the years of yesterday. No, we don't have paramedics or emergency services, but we do have Grandma's sewing kit. No, we don't have local police, but Daddy's 12-gauge is leaning in the corner, and everybody in the house learned how to shoot it before they went to kindergarten. Maybe the school bus won't be stopping by your house, but you won't care. There's more to learn exploring the abundant natural surroundings. Yeah, the internet is no good and TV reception is terrible, but you now have more time to conversate and play board games. The commute to work is long, but think of all the audiobooks and podcasts, like The Professional Noticer, that you have been missing out on. So, take a drive. One hour in any direction should do it. And come see us, but uh, not before you come through the door. That's unincorporatedtowns.com.